there is a really cool balance between fasting and working out. And I'm not talking about just like for cosmetic reasons, like sure, working out's gonna get you in shape, fasting's gonna get you in shape. No, I'm talking about the cellular level, like a really cool balance. You see, it all comes down to two very specific things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, mTOR and autophagy. And right now, that sounds complex, but I promise it's gonna make perfect sense in this video, and you're gonna have a clear understanding of why balancing your workouts with fasting is the ultimate way to combine not only amazing metabolic and cosmetic benefits, but also longevity and just long-lasting health. Hey, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, fat loss, keto, and fasting channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, but not just then, we have videos coming out throughout the rest of the week as well. I also want to make sure you head on over to highleat.com so you can check out the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, so what we want to look at today is we want to look at the balance between working out and fasting at the cellular level. Now, to make some sense of this, I have to give you a quick rundown of what mTOR is and what autophagy is, okay? Some of you have heard about this stuff before, so just bear with me if you have, because I promise I'll get to the good stuff. mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. And mTOR, for all intents and purposes, is just a very anabolic thing. What mTOR is, is something that is turned on when we are in an anabolic state, meaning we have excess calories coming in, and our body recognizes that as a time of excess, or basically just being plentiful. So it says, great, we have excess calories, we can cell divide, we can put out new cells, we can have all this growth, muscles can grow, growth hormone can occur, we've got IGF, insulin-like growth factor, all these things, right? It's a time of excess. Okay, then we have autophagy, which is the opposite. Autophagy is a process where our cells are sort of condensing and recycling and trimming out the excess so we only have what's truly needed. Okay? But let's focus on mTOR for just a second and then we'll get into the autophagy side and how this all relates with working out and fasting. So like I said, mTOR occurs when your body is rich. Okay? I want you to think of it like that. Like Times are good. Okay, the stock market's high, the Dow's at 30,000 points, everything's good, we're spending money, right? Okay, this is the same thing happening in your body. Your body's like, great, I can create more energy, I can create more adenosine triphosphate, okay, which is ATP, which is energy. Okay, it can grow new muscle, grow new tissue, all great. Okay, but times of stress trigger low levels of mTOR. So basically when you're stressed out, when you're literally under stress, or when you're not eating because you're fasting, your mTOR levels go down. But the opposite of mTOR is autophagy. So when mTOR is down, autophagy is high. And when autophagy is low, mTOR is high, okay? Now again, pay attention to that because it's gonna make some sense as I get further into this video. So at the end of the day, we want everything cycled, okay? We want a cycle of high levels of mTOR and then low levels of mTOR. Okay, high levels of mTOR are great because again, we're growing new cells. It allows us to build more muscle. Unfortunately, it also allows us to build more fat too. But again, it gives us that time of excess for cells to grow. Autophagy trims it down. So think of it like this. It's a party, mTOR's high, everything's good. Autophagy is the cleanup, okay? Now autophagy cannot come in and clean up until the party's done, okay? So autophagy can't come in and clean up all the cellular waste and everything like that until mTOR is gone, until the party's over. So mTOR is a party, autophagy is the cleanup crew. Now the cleanup crew can't come in when the party's still going on because nothing's gonna happen. So that's what we have to remember, is whenever we're building muscle, whenever we have an excess of calories or we're working out and we have mTOR activation, we also have a higher level of waste. And that's just part of life, okay? So it's like, if you're spending a lot of money or if you're living rich, you have a lot of waste too, okay? More money, more problems, right? Same kind of thing happening inside your body. So let's take a look really quick at the good and the bad of mTOR, okay? The good is increases in muscle increases in IGF, where you can build more muscle, increases in growth hormone, okay? Increases in overall abundance inside your body and increase in mitochondrial metabolism, the ability to actually create energy, all good. The bad, potential for more disease, extra waste, down-regulated immune function, okay? So when we have more mTOR, we also have more problems and definitely can lead to increases in cancer and things like that because we're increasing that cell growth. But this is exactly where the balance comes in, okay? Because levels that are too low with mTOR are actually bad as well. So there's a study that was published in the journal Cell Metabolism. It took a look at liver cells, so hepatocytes, okay? And it found that when they were in a state of low mTOR for a long period of time, 
they had sort of a chronic level of just low inflammation. It was just constantly occurring. Now the best way to sort of give an analogy of this is it's like they didn't have any stress. They never had a chance to actually grow and proliferate. They were sheltered all the time. You see, mTOR allows the growth. So when hepatocytes or liver cells weren't able to actually experience growth, they remained these small sheltered cells that actually ended up having more stress in life because they weren't able to handle things. Now the analogy that one of my team members actually gave me was like, it sounded like someone that was possibly homeschooled but never got the chance to ever have any social activity. Like, okay, so they were sheltered and they were never able to socialize, like they were too sheltered. And then they grew up and their life was stressful because they never had any stress or experience or learned how to socialize right. So that's a perfect example of what happens if your mTOR levels are too low all the time. So it's exactly why we wanna have them high and then low from time to time. Now let's dive into the opposite of mTOR, okay, which is autophagy. Now autophagy is the cellular recycling. Now I've kind of explained it in videos before, but sometimes I'm not really clear. It's not like cells literally eating each other, it's cells sort of recycling the components to become stronger. So basically you have these cells and autophagy occurs when you're in a time of stress, like when you're fasting and your cells say, uh-oh, we better start eating ourselves and recycling our own components so that we don't have to start eating muscle tissue. Basically, rather than a cell going out and eating muscle tissue and making you lose muscle, first, its first line of defense is to eat its own body parts that aren't really being utilized. So it recycles components, eats them, digests them, recycles them, and you end up with a stronger, more efficient cell. So again, to put this into context with mTOR, when mTOR goes down, autophagy goes up, and vice versa. Now here's what's interesting, is when you're fasting, amino acids trigger mTOR. So I'm digressing a little bit, but I've talked about in videos how amino acids during a fast are dangerous. And people always kind of give me crap about it, right? They always talk to me and say, oh, it's like, that's such nonsense. You're getting way too, way too granular here. Well, amino acids trigger mTOR. That's defeating the purpose of the autophagy that we normally get when a fast. So case in point here, don't have amino acids when you fast. But again, topic for a different day. So one of the cool ways that I want you to look at this is like a bulk and a cut for your cells. Now, for those of you that are kind of familiar with the whole fitness thought process of bulking and then cutting, it's like that for your cells. So when you have mTOR activation with an excess of calories and working out that triggers mTOR, you have your cells sort of bulking. I mean, they're dividing, they're growing, you're in a time of excess. So think of it like a bulk and think of autophagy like a cut. It's like you repeat that cycle in balance and you end up with a much stronger body. It's like you're bulking, you're growing more muscle cells, and then you have the actual autophagy process that's trimming them down and making them stronger. You repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And next thing you know, you've got a bigger, stronger, leaner, yet more efficient and longevity-driven healthy cell. It's exactly what we want. We want to be bigger, stronger, faster, but also live for a long time. So getting down to the nitty gritty of it, fasting increases autophagy tremendously, but working out triggers mTOR tremendously. So it actually works out. If you work out in a fasted state, you have a big spike of mTOR that is quickly recovered by a big spike in autophagy that occurs after the workout. So although during your fasting period, your workout will technically downregulate autophagy, you're doing yourself a huge service because you're triggering mTOR without excess calories. Working out literally triggers mTOR. Okay, so you're doing that without excess calories. You're triggering this anabolic switch without having to have a bunch of food. So it's like right after that, you start burning fat because autophagy is occurring and because you're actually going into that fasted state. So you're literally getting the best of both worlds. You're triggering anabolism, but then you're triggering cell cleanup, all while being in a calorie deficit. That is pretty cool. Now the other thing is when you break your fast, you're going back into mTOR abundance you're allowing your body to grow again. And because insulin sensitivity is high, mTOR activation is gonna be even higher. So you have an extreme effect of extreme mTOR activation followed by extreme downregulation and upregulation of autophagy. So that's exactly what we want. At the end of the day, we're getting balance, but we're getting big spikes that trigger muscle growth and then trigger cleanup. Muscle, fat loss, and longevity. The trifecta, everything we could possibly want. Okay, so if it comes down to getting more information on fasting, you know where to put your questions. I want you to put your questions and any comments, concerns down in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer those questions in my weekly roundup videos. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.